Hi, hello, hey, and welcome to this second very special episode of Rushed Vibes. I am Jessica Rushed Vibes Rushing, accompanied by Mr. David Rushed Vibes Rushing. And why is this a very special second episode, David Rushed Vibes Rushing? Because it is our second iteration of Mompreneur March. And we have another mompreneur on the show ready to tell us why they're so awesome. At their mama preneuring. At their mama <laughs> at their mama preneuring. <laughs> and yes. what is what is this special mama preneur's name? So we will be joined by Miss No. <laughs> By Missy Wilson. Missy. Who, Missy. Unbeknownst to us until this summer, has been flying under the guise of Missy. She might be in the witness protection. But her program. Na- her actual name is Melissa. I was very hurt. She's had us she's had us fooled. She she had us fooled all along. Bamboozled. I was like, this is pretty dope. We we have a have a friend named Missy. We don't have a friend named Missy. But we don't. We have a friend named it's Melissa. An alias. A friend named Melissa. Yeah. Your name is, Mel- I'm telling everybody, your name is Melissa. Melissa. Melissa Wilson. So anyway. We're doing- how, do, how do we know? How do we know we, Missy? How do we know Missy? So we know Missy, one, she handled the branding for this podcast that you were watching and listening to. Um, she did an amazing job of really listening to us, figuring out what we were going for, learning us and you know presenting it to us in our voice so that's one aspect of how we know missy but another way is missy and i have a bond of trolling our husbands on facebook and i don't know that there is another woman that i would allow to come for my husband at the caliber for which missy comes for david but i appreciate it so much and she Literally never misses a beat. Like she, she can, if he posts something foolish, I know she's going to keep him in check. So I, that's that our relationship is, is founded on spousal trolling. And, um, if you, if you have the opportunity to see how we engage, you would think that she and I have known each other for years and it's crazy that she and I have never met in person. So I cannot wait for all of this pandemic madness to go away and life to get back to some form of normal so that we can go on a trip or go visit them or have them come visit us and just have a grand old time because you know they she and her husband and her son are just just a cute a great family unit and um i just appreciate knowing them a lot yeah um she definitely does try to bully me on social media. Doesn't a lot. try. She successfully and, bullies um, him. It's not cool. So somebody missed the uh, <laughs> the bullying uh, courses that they they made us take in, uh, in in high school and, and at work. You know when you have those those yearly trainings. Oh, we have to watch to have. the with the eighties music those, those, in those the background terrible, with the terrible acting. Jen yeah, was at never, the water cooler and yeah. Peter walked up to her. So um, yeah, clearly Missy didn't. Didn't partake she in don't any, need to because she's a mompreneur and she running her own business. So as we mentioned, she is a mompreneur. So I have a little bio I'm going to read. Um, so Missy describes herself as a city girl in the burbs. She's from Atlanta, now lives outside of Houston, Texas with, with her family. She's striving to be a cool mom and never purchase a minivan. She is a wife, mom, and owner creator of, owner slash creator, creative director, excuse me, of uh, Humming Bee, which is a passion-fueled and skill-centered graphic design studio located in Houston, Texas. Um, she frequently works with other entrepreneurs, HBCUs, and nonprofits to make their creative visions a reality. She's addicted to Starbucks. Mm. You and me. So even even in even in our, our constant feuding, you know, we can still share an appreciation for Starbucks. Chick-fil-A and thanks humor and sarcasm are essential to a fulfilling life, which I can definitely get down with that mantra. So um we are very excited to have Miss Yon. This is our second guest. We still have uh, two more. And um, just so grateful that we, you know, it, it's, it's very, very early and it, it's very um, new, but I'm just so grateful we have this platform where we can, you and I can come on and, 
and talk about whatever we've done mm-hmm. in, in, in the past week, whatever's going on with us. But we can also highlight a lot of um, pretty special people doing really special things. And uh, Missy is we no... We are here to elevate. Yes. And, and Missy is no exception to that. She's probably the epitome of it. So we're going to take a break. And when we come back, we will have Miss Melissa. Miss Melissa. Miss Missy. Wilson. Missy. You guys so, say it like, like they do in... What's that song? One, two, step. Miss A, Miss A. I'm going to say The my- princess is here. Look. Sierra, this beat is automatic, supersonic, hypnotic, funky, fresh. Sorry. Look. I went somewhere. I'm back. I'm going to call you what your mama call you. So we'll be back with Melissa after the break. <laughs> so here we are with our second very special guest miss <laughs> missy wilson woo, woo. Woo. In, mompreneur in the house mompreneur in the google meet because it's not the flesh because you're not you're no. not you're not here yeah because they live in she lives in texas deep in the heart of texas unfortunately what's the rest of, are there any, hopefully she knows more words to that song because i think i've always wondered what other words go to that song? Um, I don't know. I don't I, know that I, just, I don't know that I've ever deemed it important enough like to know all the lyrics. Dance, the default of dance set that, that goes with it. So <laughs> we are so glad to have Missy. Um, she is just an amazing woman. And I, I say this with a lot of bias and also with the fact that I have never actually met Missy in person. <laughs> Our relationship is via um, trolling our husbands on social media, which then extended into her helping us develop the podcast for which you are going to meet her on right now. So um, we are going to allow her, because if you leave it to me, I'm just going to talk. So we're going to allow her to reintroduce herself. I didn't know if you were going to take an opportunity to like create like a hove no. flip no no okay. we're not doing that no All although right. shout out quick quick shout out to jay-z today it was announced that um square mm-hmm. headed by uh jack dorsey who was also the ceo of, of twitter they bought um a controlling stake in title for 297 million so nice. the controlling stake that jay-z bought uh about five years ago he was able to double or triple or whatever so mm. shout out to hove shout out hove Okay, now back to Missy. Back Sorry. to Missy. Is she on? Is yeah. her mic on? She is. Hey, Missy, girl, can hey. you hear? Oh, go me. ahead and um. Yes. Yeah. How are you? We're Thanks doing. For me. Yeah, we're doing well. So we're gonna have to figure out this audio delay. Can you there. hear? I can hear her. Okay. Can you hear us, Missy? Yeah, I can hear you guys. Okay, yeah, there cool. she is. She's perfect. All right. Yeah. So um, you know, obviously this month is uh, Mompreneur March. And you um, were definitely at the top of the list of people we wanted to have on. So uh, mm-hmm. I don't know if you saw the the our last episode that we had our friend Jacynthia on. That went a little off the rails because we we know Jacynthia, so she tried to come in and like try to dominate our podcast, which she I don't really I don't us. really That's appreciate. But um, we definitely <laughs> just want to focus on obviously highlight you. Um, just you know what motherhood has been like. Obviously, get your story a little bit and then kind of dive into. Uh, your professional life and how you you found your way into your craft that you um, work in today. But yeah, just give us um, and give everybody listening or watching on YouTube just a little bit of background about yourself and then we'll kind of go from there. Yeah, um, I'm Missy Wilson. I live in Houston, Texas, really spring, which is a suburb outside of Houston. Um, I am a mom, a wife, and a business owner. Um, I think I'm pretty cool, so, you know. (laughs) I would agree. Um, I'm cool. I'm quirky. I'm also a little bit of an awkward black girl, so I kind of fit all of those roles. You know, they stay true to me. Um, I have been here in Texas for, it'll be nine years this year. Oh, wow. It'll be nine years this year. I'm originally from Atlanta, Georgia. Piece of a town down. Um, yeah, um, yeah, that's pretty much about me, you know, <laughs> outside of my bio, my <laughs> elevator pitch. So um, how long were you born and like raised until you 
you became an adult in Atlanta or did you move around as you have you always lived in Atlanta or and or Texas or so I grew up west side of Atlanta um I was born and raised in Atlanta and I left for college in 2005 I went to Bennett College for Women in Greensboro oh yeah, I spent a few years. <laughs> Why is that interesting? Yeah, I spent a few years at Bennett, and then um, and through the consortium, I took classes at a couple of other schools, and then ended up at UNC Greensboro. And then after college, I moved back to Atlanta, and I was with I was in Atlanta up until I met Craig actually, and then I followed him <laughs> across. <laughs> the country to Texas and I've been here ever since. What did you, uh, what did you study in college? What was your major? Uh, fine arts. Fine arts. Okay. So you're still kind of serving in that, still kind oh, of yes. walking in that, walking well, in that a little bit. It's funny. Cause when I started at Bennett, I was a mass comm major and I was, yeah, I, um, the high school I went to was a journalism. We had a journalism magnet and we won all the awards at NSPA and it was like I was groomed to be like in broadcast production, like behind the scenes. And so I totally thought that that was my path. My father's a news anchor in Alabama. Yeah. So it was just like in my blood. And um, I just didn't like how competitive the field was. I didn't want to move to a small town and work the midnight shift just to kind of you know, get on. I knew that I eventually wanted to have a family and settle down and it just wasn't my passion anymore. And so I, you know, I've always been an artist. I come from an artistic family. I'm third generation artist in my family. So, um, that was also in my blood (laughs) and I've always loved computers and technology. Like in college, I worked at Apple at Friendly. Um, the friendly store. Is it still there? It's still there, right? I don't know. I have, I haven't been in uh it's probably been a little over a year. Um, but I, I don't remember. I I gotcha. imagine still there. Apple stores don't normally close. They don't close right. Yeah. yeah. So I worked at that location and you know, I just I combined my love of art and technology and graphic design. And my mom was also a graphic designer in the nineties. So I feel like she introduced it to me. Um yeah, that's how I got here. Yeah, so. we definitely want to dive into um, the influence your mom had on you because we were actually uh, um, we we gave you audience for your your brand relaunch, and I, I remember you specifically t- touching on on your mom um, and, yeah. and the influence and impact you had on you. But um, back to college, real quick, do, do you think the um, because you if you went to college in two thousand five, I mean you would have graduated around two thousand nine, right? So. Yeah. Do you think the fact that the recession had hit and like all the print jobs, just like journalism jobs just like went away. Do you think that had any impact on you not pursuing it or was it just purely like you Um, didn't have a passion for it? I think I just didn't have the passion for it anymore. Um, You know, I, I'm not really into delayed gratifications. I, you know, um, I want it. I want to see it within the next five years. Like I don't want to look up and, 20 years from now, I'm still trying to get on. And back then, you know, it was based on, you know, your, my, I remember my dad used to always be like MIA during sweeps week. And I was just like, wow, like this whole month depends on ratings and you can't get off or do anything. Like your whole life was kind of dictated um, through the station. And I was just like, I'm not really feeling that anymore. But like, in 2005, so that was about 2006, 2007 when I transferred. So I had already decided, like, what it's a wrap. Yeah. yeah. Like, even while I was still at Bennett, I was already making a decision to, like, pivot. Um, and I just realized that, like, my heart wasn't in it anymore. Like, in high school, you could have told me anything different. Like, I was headed to the Today Show. Like, um, I had big dreams of doing that. And then, you know, just – after going to school and just seeing um, how different the department was compared to my high school, I just, I lost my love for it. But I still have a deep respect for journalism and broadcast production. Um, I don't know if you guys know, but I watch Sunday morning religiously. Um, My husband likes to crack on me and I love like documentary style journalism. And then also like lighthearted vignettes on Sunday morning, you know, so. 
Yeah, that does sound kind of nerdy. So I would make I fun of you. It. I would make fun of you as I well. It. Hey, I learned a lot of good stuff <laughs> on Sunday, CBS Sunday morning. I encourage you to uh, check it out with your slippers and coffee mug. And, well, um, and I'm too busy. Don't match. I'm too busy watching uh, church. No, you're not watching the Lord. No, no, getting, no, getting, he's too busy becoming, me putting becoming, it on church. Becoming one with the Lord, Jesus Christ. Is this where you want to be when Jesus comes back? Really, you you want to tell that story? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying I'm 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 busy on Sunday mornings. That's all. You guys would have to uh, send me a link because I I used to watch a lot of Sunday church, so I'm always interested to look at different churches. It's just elevation. Yeah, we just. Oh, okay. Yeah, let's go on Facebook. Which I think yeah. everybody click everybody click watch now. Elevation. Um, definitely yeah. do the YouTube or the app. Uh, I did want to circle back to um the point you had, and you touched on it but I, I i'm curious in terms of elaborating more obviously your mom was a, a graphic is a graphic designer so and you talk about like that point where you realize hmm the journalism is not where my heart is what was it an easy transition to graphic design or like, was it a class? Was it a professor? Was, was there something that triggered you that you were like, okay, this is the direction I need to pivot in. Um, it wasn't easy at all. Cause even when I, like when I left college and moved back to Atlanta, I, um, I didn't get started in graphic design right away. Like I was very, um, I'm trying to see what the right word is. I was not ashamed isn't the right word. I just wasn't ready. You know, like I had kids in my classes that were just like born talented. Like I had this one dude in my class. He could do, he could whip up a design in like 10 minutes. He didn't even want to be a graphic designer. I think he wanted to be a musician. And like, I would just look at him and be like, do you realize how talented you are? But he was like, but somebody would probably have looked at me and not to like toot my own horn, but like somebody would have probably looked at me in broadcast production and be like, why are you throwing this away? Like you have years of like packages that you can show and submit. You're already like ahead of the game. Why are you stepping away? So like my aunt and my mom used to hound me even to this day. And like, even before the rebrand, they were just like, you have talent. You can do this. Like you can be an entrepreneur. And I'm like, no, I can't do it. Like, I, I really give my credit to the two of them because I was so fearful to just step out there. Um, I'm a bit of a perfectionist. And so if it's not exactly right, I'll procrastinate. And I've been, this whole rebrand and relaunch has been forcing me to kind of step outside of my comfort zone and like, even if it's not exactly perfect, like let's get it out there let's show the world. And then you can still build upon it to make it and get it to where you want it to be. So I really credit my mom and my aunt because you know how family is mm-hmm. like, Oh, yeah. Oh, Alyssa, you can do it. <laughs> no, y'all are just my mom and my aunt. Like that's what yeah. you're supposed to say. That's right. what y'all supposed to say. But yeah, I truly credit the two of them because my aunt gave me my first like paying job to oh. design her stuff. I will not show it to you because that was 2005, Missy, and elongated photos and everything. It was bad, but she trusted me, and she knew where she knew I had potential. All right, we all we all got to start somewhere. Yes, you know, nobody yes. nobody starts out perfect. Um, right. So, what I know you mentioned the Apple Store. What what other jobs did you work in between? college and and where you are now where you you own your own, I, own business so in college i was working at the apple store or wait in college i was at la quinta in american express business travel okay apple and then when i moved back to atlanta i did nike retail so i was like working in nike running store um i did front office for my aunt's dental practice <laughs> Then when I moved to Houston, um, so like my first official graphic job was here in Houston for a claw company. I was in the marketing department. Mm-hmm. And we were a claw selling company? Clogs, like medical, oh, like nurse. Okay. I thought you said claw yeah. and I was like, wait. No, 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 clogs. C-L-O-G-S. Yep. Yeah. Um, like the shoes clogs? Yes, girl. Yes. Like I was. <laughs> like I was wearing clogs. 
Not even harder. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I'll send you the link, but uh, Sunita was the original Danish clog. And, you know, we cater to the medical industry and the equestrian industry. And every day, you know, there is a niche market of mm-hmm. women and men that love clogs. Yes. Um, we were headquartered in Denmark and then the U.S. Um, warehouse and headquarters were here in Houston. And so I was there for two years before I went into oil and gas. Yeah. So that was like my first paying graphic design gig. Like, yeah. Interesting. So, very, very interesting. Like, that job, I wore a lot of hats. Like, we did you wear a lot of clogs suits. too? I did wear clogs <laughs> at the same show. <laughs> yeah. I got to design a catalog. I learned about like producing a whole fashion line a year in advance, seasons ahead. Like I learned so much of that job. It was crazy. Oh, wow. It Like a lot. Yeah. Like that one really, um, it really taught me about being in marketing and just getting out there and making it happen. Like you, you can't, if you, there's no, I can't, you yeah. figure out how to do it in marketing. <laughs> So I'm forever grateful for that job. Yeah. Oh. So I have to send you some pictures of me and my clocks. Yes, yes I please definitely. do. Need um, all the blackmail material yeah, that I was we gonna, can, I was we can actually get our hands say, on. Don't send them because he will, he will save them and use them against you. So when you least expect it. So how many graphic design positions did you have between what your first position working with your aunt up until you decided to take the leap and have your own mom produce. Uh, let's see. Four. Okay. Yeah, Did you have which, which was the hardest? What was the hardest job for you to get? To get? Um, I don't think any of them were like hard to get. Just like I'm not one of those people that kind of shrinks up in interviews, like, I feel like that's the easy part for me. Like Mm -hmm. I'm very like personable. I can try to connect. I try to do my research and everything. So like getting the job isn't the hard part, but just, you know, staying in there, making sure I can prove my skill. Um, you know, cause some people say like, Oh, we just need a graphic designer, but just like any job, you know, you have people that have a specific niche, you know, and back then my niche was corporate design. Mm -hmm. So I was a corporate designer at a clog fashion (laughs) line. So I had to like break out of that corporate feel and kind of learn how to do more bubbly, you know, 30 to 60, uh, age group for women. You know, I had to learn how to like cater to that design or cater to those type of designs. Um, so that was more of like a learning experience. And even like um, the oil and gas industry, like that was kind of switching back to corporate, but just learning about oil and gas period was kind of a huge learning curve. Um, Cause it was so different. I mean, I went from designing for a dental office to the, the clock company, to oil and gas. And then my last job before I broke into being an entrepreneur was I was designing retirement forms. So I've had a pretty <laughs> diverse career. To yeah. say the least. <laughs> yes. Wow. Yeah. And you know, it's crazy. Uh, you never realize um, just how diverse um, design is like mm-hmm. right. almost anything, any product you touch or pick up or look at, like a designer played Did. probably at least, you know, half of the role of, of getting that in front of you. So, um, it's just crazy. Like how many different niche, niches and, and industries that design, um, right. you can be a designer for, um, that's, that's crazy. Um, exactly. so, uh, we got a little bit of time before our first break. So I want to delve into, um, more of a personal, uh, topics. So you mentioned that you're, that you're married. I am. Um, so when did you, and where did you meet your, your husband, Craig? And, um, what has, so it's two questions. And, um, what were those first couple of, 
years of marriage like for you? Um, so we met in Greensboro. We had both lived in Greensboro, uh, I think five or six years and neither one of us ever met. I think I might've seen him once bouncing at heaven, which was a club there. Um, so yeah, we met in Greensboro. He was living in New York. He was in business school. I moved back to Atlanta by then. And so we met in March, 2012. And I'm trying to say, I think we made it official in August, um, August, 2012. And we've been together ever since. Mm. Um, and we were long distance for like the first six months. Yeah. That's tough. Then, yeah. Yeah. Um, well, it was before he started, you know, his career. Sure. Or it was easy for him. I was working for a nonprofit at the time. Um, and we would stay up FaceTiming oh. to like four in the morning. So like our, we were friends more than anything. So like that was like the foundation of our relationship. Um, and so we've been married for five years now. And um, I feel like any relationship, like, you know, relationships are roller coasters. Um, but I would say 90% of it has been just a glorious time. He's in the back so he can hear me. Yeah. <laughs> don't let him, don't let him, into, don't let him intimidate you. Really cool. no. um, I, I feel like our twice humor, if you need help. I was going to say, if you need <laughs> <laughs> No, um, yeah, like our hu- we have such a similar humor, mm-hmm. so like we laugh over the stupid. Can we curse? Yeah, no. of course. You right. laugh, laugh over the stupid shit. So, yeah. <laughs> like the other day, he text messaged me. We were listening to a podcast, and he text messaged me. Good news: the McRib is back. <laughs> and it's Bill Simmons. <laughs> it's Bill Simmons at from The Ringer. Yeah. <laughs> And so he'll just be, we'll just send that to each other and like bust out laughing for like a few minutes. Like nobody else would get that, us, you know? Um, and so um, we have similar ideals when it comes to parenting. Um, so that has been probably easier than trying to raise Patrick with anybody else. Uh, I think that's been a plus. Now, we were raised differently. Mm-hmm. I will say that. Um, my husband is Caucasian. I am black. So there are a, l- a few things that are a little different um, when it comes to parenting. Uh, what are some of the, what, are, what what's like the biggest, um, <laughs> biggest void between you two when it comes to parenting? If, you, if you're okay with sharing, because I know he's, yeah. he's listening. I mean, I'm trying to be a more intentional parent. I grew up in a generation where you know, spanking was acceptable and everything. And originally I thought I was going to spank my kids. So I know that corporal punishment is a sensitive topic um, to a lot, but Craig and I coming to agreeing on similar parenting styles, we agreed not to um, spanking is very, very, very last resort. Mm -hmm. So um, I was not raised that way. Um, And I also have learned that, it takes a lot of patience to make sure that you're trying to, you know, teach your child and discipline them without, let's say spankings or whippings or Mm -hmm. what. Um, And then there's some other differences. Like I've got a million cousins, (laughs) cousins that ain't even related to me. Um, (laughs) I think Craig has like five cousins total. (laughs) So, it's little things like that. Like I want my son to, our son to grow up near family. Uh-huh. Um, these are things that we did not consider until after Patrick was born. Right. Um, whether we get closer to Rochester or closer to Atlanta or closer to California, like I want him to have family nearby. Um, you know, I feel like Charlotte, North Carolina is a good midpoint it, between it really is. between Atlanta and, and Rochester I'm just I think so I think we should start a committee place. we can get t-shirts we can move the Wilsons to to Charlotte I think it would be perfect yeah. so when you should. when you say spanking do you mean like obviously there's no switch involved because that's that's real old school but um <laughs> yeah, I was never spanked with a switch you never got spanked with a switch I didn't either my I grandmother my grandma beat me with everything else except a switch so like 
I remember one time because uh, my Grandma, brothers and I. Grandma's beat. Yeah. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh wow. Um, my well, we grew up in Virginia, so um, my grandmother, my dad's mom, uh, lived down here in North Carolina, where we are now. So we would come down every two weeks in the summer, my brothers and I, and my. Sometimes my dad would stay, and then sometimes he'd drop us and then drive back, so he and my mom could have some time. But uh, I remember my grandmother specifically one time. I was I was being annoying, you know. I'm the youngest youngest of three. That's what he does. So I was annoying my oldest brother, and I was just I was just throwing a fit. And um, I think my grandma she had told me she like you know all right that's it like that's enough. And I did it one last thing. I think I'd like knock something down or whatever. And I remember trying to walk out the door, and then like just. She, I think she grabbed me by my collar and then she just, I saw her turn to find something to pick me up. I and mean, she like one of them hair combs that y'all, <laughs> and she, the pointy ends and she, yeah, she took it to my, took it to my backside. So obviously y'all aren't talking about that kind of, of spanking, but do you mean like hand on butt or do you, do you distinguish between like a pop and a spank or is everything kind of just See, I think, here, like, I think whoopings and I know that it's, is it, it's, is it whip, it's whipping like W H I P P I. Uh, I grew up on it whooping. Yes. Right. And spanking. I don't think I would whoop my child. Like whipping right. is like a belt, a yeah. switch. You oh, know, okay. I think there's levels to that. No. I'm literally talking about a hand pop. Like that's a spanking in my oh, head. Okay. Thigh, bottom. We don't do any of that. Okay. Not to share like <laughs> not to see who not to see who's like the, the, the bigger spanker between the two. But I know we we pop um uh, our, oldest. our oldest on the hand. I'm um, gonna actually know the last time I popped her. But I, I've sp- I know I've spanked her hand to bottom uh, once, and that was just because she was just wilding, and yeah, she got to the point. Him. She broke Jessica, and, it, and if you break Jessica, that's, that's you've you've lot. done a lot. So I was like, okay, right. I need to come yeah. in. Yeah. Especially, I would say when I was a full time stay at home, work from home mom. I think that there was one day where Patrick got it on his little thigh. And oh, that's a sensitive me. Mm. Yeah. Hey, I didn't. I promise you, it was like this. A second, <laughs> yeah. like, my handprint was on his little thigh, and I yeah. said, "Okay, we, we can't even thank you." Okay, so you know, I think my mom was like, "You should, a water bottle, get it." Oh, yeah, like, the water a bottle. <laughs> He's not a cat, mom. Yeah. So yeah. I have definitely listened to more um, intentional parenting podcasts. Yes, hmm. I think that I need to find more black women in those spaces because mm-hmm. I don't always agree with Miss Sweet Janet Lansbury or not Janet Lansbury, that's not her name. Oh, oh, I, thought you just, I thought you were just making up a name. Oh, I just no, no, no. So that's very, as, as, as a very doc, good Dr. Lipschitz. That's a very good general. It's called general. Unruffled Respectful Parenting Janet Les- Lansbury Unruffled. Okay. Yeah. Well, and so, it just sounds like a lady who wears she has the softest voice and makes pies all day. If you were into ASMR, you would love her podcast. <laughs> I, mean, she I might pass. Voice. Um, I, I think when it comes to like discipline for for me, what I've learned with Sauce is it's not the actual like amount of impact; it's just the the audacity of doing it. So. Right. Like, and again, I don't know the last time I've popped her, but I remember one time I was like, you're going to pop. And I I, pro- I probably just went like that. And right. she, her life was over. She was, oh, she wow. was just like, you dare ah. to, to pop me. Nah, see, this one in here will laugh at you. He thinks it's funny. So I'm like, that might okay. be the difference between, I think that's between a boy, boys and, yeah, boys and girls. Boy yeah. um, he literally so, thought it was funny. Like he doesn't listen to me. Like he listens to crap, like cranky, right. natty boys. And he just looked like I had a chase after him. But he acts well at school. Mm-hmm. So that's what matters. That's my rule. Like, you can cut up on me. Yeah. But I better not get a bad report at school. And then he's still yeah. three. So, like, true. Yeah. You've got to give equal toddlers do toddler things, you know? Sure. Um, yeah, so I think this is a good, this is, I, I definitely want to get into parenting a little bit more, but um, we need yeah. to take our, our first break. So uh, let's do that and then we'll jump right back in. Sounds good. Cool. All right, so we're back with Missy Wilson, designer, brand strategist, social mm-hmm. media guru extraordinaire. Woman. Woman. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. That too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we were talking about parenting before the break. So um, we, we got into um, all the different ways that we 
we <laughs> beat our children. <laughs> no, I'm playing. I um, beat my child. But uh, <laughs> so, did you when when you and Craig uh, were, were first married? Did was it always the plan to have kids? Were you were you the couple that planned when you were going to try to get pregnant? Was it kind of unexpected, or were you guys just kind of somewhere in the middle? So I I knew like since I was a little girl that I wanted to be a mom. I think I wanted to be a mom more than I wanted to be a wife. Oh, uh, I just knew that. Like when I was little, I always knew that. Like, and it might be because my mother was, uh, my parents were divorced, so like my dad wasn't really in the picture. So I just knew like how awesome my mom was, and like I wanted to give her grandkids. That was like my vision when I was a little girl. Um, and so I think at first Craig was undecided, and I was just like you know, this is really great and I am all into you, but it's one thing that I'm not willing to give up on. Yeah. So you need to decide, like, if you really want to, like, you need to make sure you really want to get kids because I don't want you to, like, resent me later or anything if we get to that point. And that's actually when we were still dating. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we have been married, we got married in 2015 and then we he was an audit before we got married. And I already knew with that travel schedule, I was like, yeah. I'm having kids while you're in audit. Like, right. no. <laughs> um, and then we, after he got out of audit, I think a couple of months, we got a call that they were moving us to Beaumont. And I remember us sitting down at the Chick-fil-A, to, like we were getting ready to sign our mortgage papers. And I was signing papers at Chick-fil-A? No, oh. this is after. Like, <laughs> after church, that's probably the next holiest place to do to, to do anything. Is so Chick-fil-A. we signed our documents, and then we went to Chick Fil A. Oh, okay. I was sitting at Chick Fil A, and like we were the only people without kids. And when I say we we're the only people, every family had like five kids. Like it was the most crowded Chick Fil A I've ever seen in my life. Like it was kids everywhere, and I was like, it's nothing to do in this city. <laughs> All they do is make me. <laughs> and I was talking so much shit. I was like, oh, so many kids. Oh, God. <laughs> I was pregnant a year later. Something in the water. Uh, <laughs> that Chick-fil-A sweet tea got you. Yeah. Chick-fil-A. It's so, in the water. But we did, like, um, I mean, this is an adult show. Yeah. I went off of birth control, obviously. Mm-hmm. And so... I have friends that had babies and it took them like six months to a year. So I was like, Oh, it's going to take six months to a year. I'll just get off now. I got off of birth control in January. I was pregnant by April. It was uh-huh. not expecting that. Yeah. So it happened pretty quickly. Um, even my gynecologist was like, well, that didn't take long. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, so we kind of planned and kind of did it. Like we knew we wanted kids and we knew that it was a decent time. Um, but didn't realize it was going to happen that fast. Like, I think we were thinking more of a summer baby. Um, yeah. But yeah, God had other plans. Yeah. So. <laughs> so where were you professionally at the point where you were planning this or um, were pregnant with Patrick? And how did that affect your 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 mindset in terms of your career and like you as an individual now becoming a mom? Right. So we moved to Beaumont in 2016. I started my business October 2016, and we moved November 2016, like a month later. Mm. Um, we got pregnant April, 2000, April or May 2017. And so I was still in that newbie phase of business, you yeah. know. I was still, and then, like, Beaumont. I don't even know if you guys know about Beaumont. Like Beaumont's a pretty small city. Like I think it might have a hundred thousand people, maybe hundred and eighteen thousand people. Please don't quote me, Beaumont. I love y'all. You know, I always have a special <laughs> place in my heart. Um so like I was still fresh, you know. I did have clients, I did have money coming in. Um, but I think I underestimated how challenging motherhood could be. Mm-hmm. And entrepreneur, like being an entrepreneur is already 
super challenging as well. So yeah. it's just like I just kept throwing curveballs, like, oh, you can do it, you can do it. And it's like, but wait, I think I just slept 16 hours yesterday. Like, <laughs> pregnancy <laughs> knocked me on my ass because, like, I was. I was exhausted that whole, I was exhausted and sick that whole first trimester. Like, I think I lost 10 pounds um, through the first and second trimester. So having deadlines and having to, you know, meet my clients' expectations also while I'm trying to learn how to get ready for motherhood and I'm carrying this baby and I'm in Beaumont. Like, (laughs) it was a lot of different, um, things to prepare for and just try to like, look, it's only, you're only going to go up from here. So like, let's get it done. Um, the true challenge came along when he arrived, Mm. you know, uh, I definitely underestimated having a newborn. Mm -hmm. I was like, I can do this. I'll be able to, you know, work and take meetings and, I'll work around his nap schedule. And, you know, I just had all these expectations. And I think a lot of people do when it comes to becoming a mom, mm-hmm. you know, Oh, I'm going to do these monthly photo shoots for him. <laughs> but like month eight is like, yeah, put this on, bro. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Take this picture. <laughs> um, but the real true challenge, and I know I keep saying this, but the real challenge is when he started becoming mobile. Mm-hmm. Then it was yes. I, I I had to break down and have a conversation with Craig. Like I can't keep him at home with me and expect to do a full time business. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like I'm trying. I'm not saying that there aren't women out there that can. I just don't think I'm one of them. And so right around the time he was getting ready to turn one, I started searching for a Mother's Day out. Um, Cause I knew I didn't want to have him in school full time. Mm-hmm. Like I wanted to be able to have a flexible schedule and be able to show up for any programs he might have or parties or whatnot. Um, and I didn't want him to just be there like from six to six, let's say like yeah. a normal preschool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, although now, you know, if the money's coming in, I'll consider it. You know? <laughs> Just saying, I love my son, but six to six sounds real good. Someday. It's a mini vacation right there. Yeah. Um, do you know what I can do with all those? I was like, I'm just thinking about it in my head. Like, you, could, you could start <laughs> another business. Right. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, and so when I actually got him. We had paid the deposit, I think, in Beaumont. We got the call that we were being moved back to Houston. Oh, wow. And so we had to, like, start from scratch. Like, oh, wow. I had to restart my business. I had to try to find new clients. I mean, the one thing about graphic design, like, I can do it anywhere. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't, like, a huge transition. But the networking that I was doing in Beaumont, I now had to transition and start doing it in spring really because i'm in the suburbs outside of houston Um, houston is technically like 45 minutes away so it was just another you know that's life though like you you get comfortable and then you you know you always gotta adapt to change you know so so we've we've talked about motherhood and i greatly appreciate that i being a mother too but i think it's it's really important to me to address the woman in you not the wife not the mom I appreciate it. just just the woman in you. yeah <laughs> you just you guys did we organized some looking. things He's so i guess i i kind of, and i i i feel like i know you, if there's a surface level i feel like via our relationship i know you probably like like maybe three layers in um right. how would you describe yourself without your roles without telling people that you are a wife, that you're a daughter, that you're a mother, that you're like, who, who is Missy? 
And Missy is actually Melissa, and I found that out, and I, I like still can't get oh, over you the didn't fact. Know? No, I mean I, I found it out when oh. we were working, when she was working on, when we were working together on the podcast, and I was so hurt. Like I felt like a, a level of deception yeah, in our relationship was created. Like somebody had had hacked our email. Well, I'm like, like yo, I was like, yo, Missy, I don't know if you know, but like some chick named Melissa sent me an invoice, Who is and Melissa? I don't. So many people get upset when they find out that my name isn't really Missy. Like y'all really thought out here thinking my mama named me. I, you know what? I did. Hey. I did. And I, I mean, I owe your mom an apology that I I, I assume she Here's named you Missy. Here's the kicker. She hates Missy. Like, she hates the nickname Missy. Like, with a passion. So before we answer the question, where did the nickname Missy come from? So my Nana, my dad's mom, used to call me Missy when I was little. Oh. And so she used to call me Missy, but it never, like caught on like she was the only person that called me that and she lived in virginia so i would see her during the summers mm-hmm. or whatever and my mom was sitting right there shout out to virginia um, virginia beach what what no, um no yeah. no nova baby nova all day. apparently Princess virginia Anne, beach is not really virginia not trash floor. get out of here i love virginia beach anyway i'm not going to know that summer's there i'm probably romanticizing it whatever <laughs> um, terrible but yeah, so Missy, my, my Nana called me Missy. Um, she still does. And then when I got to college, I just kind of wanted to reinvent myself. Mm-hmm. And I was like, well, y'all call me Missy. And it just caught on. Like, all my, I can always tell, like, where you met me. Based on what people call um, you. Based on what call me. And, like, sometimes my family members try to call me Missy. I'm like, well, what are you doing? <laughs> That's not for you. <laughs> And then, um, but I was also working at, um, I was working at the Rush in Greensboro and another one of the, the girls had already been there, my friend Melissa. And so people kept getting us confused because we were both mm-hmm. operations and I was like, oh, just call me Missy. And it, I've been with you ever since. Yeah. yeah. Did, you, did you answer the, 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 no, that's oh, the first my role. Yes. Yeah, yeah, my role. So outside of being a mom a wife a daughter like i am what i would consider just fun bubbly i'm very social i love going out and meeting people i love being outdoors and in nature like i'm so outdoorsy um i love like camping and kayaking and hiking we have a white water center here just fyi <laughs> We're going to start this committee. We're going to chat about that after the podcast. Um, I have notes. So, <laughs> no. Um, so, like, I love outdoor. I'm very outdoorsy. I love traveling. Um, I, I feel like I'm just a good person at heart. Like, I care about my fellow man. Like, I care about people. Um, and I want to make an impact on this earth before I leave, you know, like I care about that type of stuff. Um, but yeah, I think in a nutshell, those words pretty much describe me. Um, I care that I'm doing good in the world and I guess it still kind of stems back because I was like, like, and Patrick grows up to be a kind man. You know, <laughs> It's like, even though I'm still rediscovering who that person is, like, um, and I think one thing that I don't is still kind of taboo, one with um, women, black women, is I had to seek therapy to try to figure out who that person was mm-hmm. again. Um, because I am still discovering it, you know. Um, I feel like women go through a transition of true transformation when we become moms and wives. And I feel like that's not always talked about, you know. Um, I love my therapist. She's definitely helped me, you know, try to figure out who I am outside of Patrick's mom, Craig's wife, you know, who is Melissa slash Missy. Like, who are you? What makes you happy? You know, and it's outside of just self-care and bubble bath. You know, like, I want to establish who I am with my friends, with my girls, you know, have a whole personality outside of you're an entrepreneur, you're a mom, your wife. Like, I think that those things are very, very important. I love that answer. That was brilliant. 
Thank you. <laughs> started it. And it's, it's a little, you need a little, it's a little misty up here in the corner. corner of my eye. So um, I, I do want to jump in. I know we've kind of dabbled in and out of it, but I, I do want to dive in like specifically to your, your, your business and mm-hmm. kind of talk about, um, you know, just the process, you know, how, how you got it to the, the level it is now, how you came up with the name. Um, so go ahead and, and just kind of, you know, do your, do your other elevator pitch. Obviously it's, yeah. it's there on your, on your chest, but just tell us, you know, what right. the name of your business is, how you conceived it and, you know, kind of what you specialize in. Sure. Um, I own Humvee, our passion fueled skill centered graphic design studio here in Houston, Texas. Um, we focus on bringing small businesses and we focus on bringing their visions to life. Um, you know, a lot of people usually start up their business and, you know, they come to me like, Hey, I just need a logo. And it's like, wait, you know, branding, creating a brand is more than just a logo. And I feel like there are a lot of people that cater to that, but the average entrepreneur doesn't know about branding. And so that's where I step in. And, um, even though I do focus a lot on branding, graphic design, web design. I also do marketing collateral. So I do flyer design, social media. Um, I focus on small projects too, not just the big stuff. Um, But anytime that I get to be creative and um, help a small business or I've had, I've worked with some historically black colleges and nonprofits like those are things that are uh, close to my heart. I grew up on the AUC campus in Atlanta, um, the Atlanta University campus, um, or Atlanta University Center, for those who might not know. Um, so anytime that I can, like, give back or assist in bringing, you know, um, just making designs just truly um, hit that level uh, is really one of my passions. Um so again, uh, Humming Bee started in 2016, October 2016, here in Texas. Um, I went through <laughs> businesses before it became Humming Bee. So when I first started it back in 2005, it was like Mel Ray Designs. <laughs> Don't laugh. <laughs> <laughs> I'll show you the logo if you really want to laugh, David. <laughs> um, but yeah, so... Humming bee started because the origin of Melissa is honey bee in Greek. So my actual name. Um, and then when I was a little girl, my grandmother had um, dogwood and Japanese maple trees in her yard. And like, she'd always have hummingbirds visit and it was just always her favorite bird. Um, and so anytime that I see a hummingbird, it makes, always makes me think of my great grandmother, Lala. And um, a good friend of mine, we were collaborating and we came up with humming bee. And I thought that it just kind of, it truly, I'm bubbly, I'm social, I'm really fun. And like my brand, I feel evokes those emotions. Like when you see my colors and when you see my palette and when you see, like, I want you to know that creativity and branding and being passionate about your business can also be fun. It doesn't also have to be um, stuffy or, you know, just straight to the point. Like it should be an experience. And I think you, we had fun designing. Oh yeah. It was was a terrible, terrible experience for me. Horrible. You get five stars from me. Thank you. I appreciate I, you. I, I suffered through every meeting, every design. Lies. He was literally <laughs> like, okay, we got to meet with Missy. It's time to meet with Missy. Let's get the kids to bed. We got to meet with Missy. He was more lit about meeting with you than I was. So let don't don't spread lies. He's such a hater. He wants to hate me so much. He more. really does. He but deep down, he knows he 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 loves you. He no, adores no, you. It, no. It was it was great. It was fun. Um, and it was it was cool from from some from the perspective of someone who, um was probably capable of putting something together like on my own, kind of like you said, most entrepreneurs think that they can just kind of just get a logo and then they can do everything else. Um, I probably could have struggled through it. Um, but having someone who obviously we, we knew beforehand somewhat, uh, come in and, and you just, 
provided authority like from the get go. You know, at, at no point were we ever like, eh, you know, like you just yeah. just came in with with like knowledge and like, okay, no, we need to do this, we need to do this. Do you want to do this? Do you want to do this? So um, it put my mind at ease, mm-hmm. and um, it's it's really <laughs> not to get on, not, not to get people emotional. Um, although I, I, I still I still got the little it's, it's right up here it's, it's, it's trying it's trying to find its way through um, there I don't know uh, if rush vibes would have been a thing had we not had you know had it not been for you so we're we're always very appreciative um, of of what you bring what you brought to the table um, and you know just humming be as as an entity um, on the on the subject of of clients. Mm-hmm. Who was or what was Humming Bee's first client? Do you remember? My aunt. <laughs> okay, not not a family member. I meant. Oh, okay, it was Clark Atlanta University. Was my first client. Oh, what'd you do? Um, jeez, what did I do? It was either a flyer or a um, fundraiser packet. Mm. I like. They had at that time. They didn't have anyone on staff, so to do graphic design. So they were doing, they were hiring freelancers and I had just started my business and um, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. My mom does work at Clark Atlanta uh, University. Nepotism. <laughs> Team nepotism all day. <laughs> nepotism. I'm here um, for it. Well, she, when no, I grew no. up on the campus, so like they a lot you. of the people there, they still remember me from when I was three and it's like, oh, well, Melissa, get you. Oh, Melissa got a business. Come here, girl. You know. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So they gave me my first. They were my first outside of family because my aunt literally when she found when my aunt found out I was starting my business, she was like, "Well, I need a retainer. Let me see. I need someone to do my social media. I need somebody to do my website. Like, what's your monthly fee? You know, she's been my cheerleader from day one. But yeah, Clark Atlanta was my next. Um, client outside of my um without being specific so speak in in general terms mm-hmm. um, what was what was the worst client you've ever had just podcast Dude. called can Rush you de- can you just de- <laughs> can you describe I mean, can you describe <laughs> his wife like, was really great but this guy <laughs> um, I can only imagine man you should have fired you should have fired him he's a friend no i'm just kidding um I haven't honestly had any like worse clients. That's good. What's that? No, -hmm. I just said that's that's good because you 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 figure you know working in in the creative field, um, it's almost inevitable that you're going to come across that person who's like, no, you don't get it, like because they're visualizing something and you may not be connecting. But if you haven't had one, I mean, I think that's. I mean, I feel like we've all had one. That's what I'm trying to say. Like, what was it? Oh, what was it like? You don't need to. Oh, you don't. You don't. You don't need to put it out there. They've been out there. Okay, I've had one or two. <laughs> okay, one one last question. So, oh, uh, man, I had I have questions. I know, but oh, you you sometimes you you veer off with the the time. I want to get mine in, and then I'll let you run okay. for like whatever. You gonna let me get my question? Um, oh, what? Uh, I designed this. Stuff. You uh, did? Ooh. You this, is our, this was our wedding favor. Oh, I like so that. Our, our custom logo from our wedding. She made a so logo for her these. wedding. Wow. Everybody got to take these. Oh, yeah. I should show you my suite. It was bomb. Like my whole invitation suite. Anyway. Yes, David. Um, I'm <laughs> so how do you how do you find how do you find clients that aren't your mom or your aunt or related to you oh. or connected? She got all these good money. I'm just just saying, you know, how do you how do you find clients outside of? So honestly, for four years, my client's base has been word of mouth, referral based. Um, so if you had a good experience with me, you told your friends, and they came back. So I've had I've been lucky enough that I haven't had to like break into advertising or, you know, paying for leads or anything. I've been very fortunate. But yeah, definitely word of mouth. Social media um, has truly helped. Um, I joined a design group um, and my mentor, he's kind of getting out of day-to-day graphic design. So he sends me a lot of um, his clients 
you know, that want stuff. So definitely like referral leads um, has been huge for me. Cool. Um, mm-hmm. Cause I, I know Jessica is, is I, I'm not looking at her, but I feel her, <laughs> I feel her energy. So because I want, I want her to get hers in um, uninterrupted. Let's take uh, one last break. Okay. We'll come back and then we'll let Jessica get hers and then we'll, we'll wrap up. <laughs> So we'll, I have two questions. I have to write them down so I don't forget. We'll be right back. <laughs> okay. So we're back. Um, and I've got my two questions that David is going to let me ask. Um, so my, you know, I got one more question. <laughs> <laughs> my first question. One is this is America and it's no secret that pretty much in any industry, there's lack of diversity. Um, and especially lack of diversity with black women. So as a black woman, as a black female graphic designer, how, what is your, what are your peer? What do they look like? How, do you come across other black female graphic designers? Do what, is there a sisterhood? Is it like, Oh, Hey sis, like we in here is, how does that feel? Like, so honestly, thanks to social media, most of my designer friends are black. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm a part of AAGD, so African American Graphic Designers. Um, we're a Facebook group, and we're they're moving off a of Facebook group. Um, I forget how many, but like it's some dope designers in there, like so dope. Um, and a lot of the designers that I look up to are Black women. So Karen Spears with Character in Chicago, and Tahiti Spears with 0514 Design. Um, who was also in Chicago, like they're dope black women. Like I try to surround myself and, you know, look up to amazing black designers because there's so much talent. And like, I also think that that's just kind of how I got lucky because in the corporate world, it didn't look like that. Um, Before I started my business, and was like looking for answers on social media. It definitely didn't look like that. Like, um, I'm trying to think. Uh, at all of my jobs, so the cloud company, I was the only black designer, I think. Um, and then, uh, but I mean, like our head of marketing, she was a Latina. So there was diversity. Um, I believe there was diversity. The, the proper term is Latinx. I knew he was going to try and come for you. I'm sorry. Excuse me. As soon as you said, the, I was the, like, the he's politic- the politi- politically correct. He was Latinx. Um, so that was pretty cool that like I worked in a report, like I, I reported to women, you know. Um, so we've got that part of diversity, but like I have never. Yeah, it's a lack of diversity in the corporate design world. But a lot of people are breaking away and starting their own deal, you know. Um, So that's been huge. And then also, like, with everything going on with social justice, um, I hope it's not pandering, but I have been seeing a lot more involvement of Black designers. Like, um, one of the designers that just did, like, the whole Google Chrome skins, she's a black designer and her stuff is like so dope. So like a lot of the corporations are reaching out to black designers. Um, and I'm trying to make sure it's not like, Oh, we posted a black box mm-hmm. cause we support diversity. Um, now more than ever, <laughs> we hear you. We support you. We see you. Right. <laughs> We're still not going to give you business. <laughs> exactly. Have you seen that meme where it's like, the pyramid of diversity and it's like yeah we know you got diversity down here we want it up here yep. in the yeah. board yeah, that's. yeah. so yes yeah, so i've been very blessed to follow and support other black designers and we've got this whole little niche um and like literally if i have an issue i'm going to them first um if i need work or i have a referral lead or anything like i'm going to them first um just a force of habit we we appreciate that. Yes. And my last question is, uh, obviously, when you become an entrepreneur, 
and you're competing with against other entrepreneurs, other people in corporate, you know, sometimes you sell yourself short to ensure that you get the business. So how did you determine your value and how do you ensure that others appreciate your value and don't see it as, oh, she's just trying to milk me for money or, you know, how do you, how do you measure like, this is my worth and this is why you should be paying me this much? Um, I tried, like I tried, I recently, so when I did go through the rebrand, I set systems in place and I'm trying to give you an experience along with the product service. So not only are you walking away with collateral, I want you to go through my experience and my, or what I call my client experience and walk away with having knowledge about branding, having knowledge about color palettes. Like I want you to be able to use whatever I give you or whatever I design for you and be able to make things happen. Um, I don't think you could just get that at the local $25 logo design. Like, no offense to them. Yeah. Some stuff is nice, you know, but like there's more to it. And I had to learn that not everybody is looking for this service. Mm. And it's no hard feelings, it's business. They're just not my ideal client. And I've had to walk away from people that's like, what? How much are you charging? And I have to explain, this is what comes with this price. Right. You know, you're not just, you're not going to have any issues with files. You're not going to have any, like you're going to know who your, your audience is. Like it's so much more to it than just a logo. And I have to explain that to some people. And if I have to explain it more than once or twice, that just isn't my client. And I had to, I've had to walk away, you know, a couple of times just because when people see graphic designer or creative director, they think one thing and it's like, no, humming bee is an experience too. So let me explain. And usually I can turn it into a lifelong client. And sometimes I can, I just had to be okay with just walking away, you know? And that's business, no hard feelings, you know. I had to uh, learn to not take it personally. Um, I am almost 100% there. I do <laughs> attach to my work and my designs. And you should. So, I mean, yeah, you should. I'm not, like my mom's always like, you can't take it personally. I'm like, but I do sometimes, you know. <laughs> like, <laughs> um. So that's a little hard, but yeah, I have learned to just walk away and know that like my ideal client is there, you know. That's good. I mean, I think um, I can't speak from an entrepreneurial sense of providing service, um, mm -hmm. but just, you know, as someone who's been uh, a job seeker, right? Like right. somebody offers you a job when you're, when you're young, coming up, you're like, oh, I get a job. It's, you know, one comma five, you know. Five, five figures, you know, I'll, I'll take it. I'll do whatever. Um, and I think for me, it took me, God, I think probably till I was like in my late twenties, maybe probably. Yeah. Well, it'd have to be mid twenties. Cause I've only been, I was only at one place for, for about six years where it was like every opportunity isn't necessarily the opportunity for you. Um, and right. I think it takes, it takes having that, um, that, that sense of your worth, like you said, right. to know, like, yeah, this might be a certain amount of dollars and yeah, it might be a job, but you know, how far down the line am I going to get before I'm like, the hell am I doing here? You know what I'm saying? Right. Or so you never want to waste your, your time or your talent. And I think that's, that's yeah. a conversation Jessica and I have had as well. Um, when, when she's been looking for work, uh, <laughs> I, I would say afraid, I don't want to say it on here cause I don't want to get, I don't wanna get canceled. Um, but I would, I would essentially tell her, you know, just because someone offers you a job doesn't mean you have to take it. Like, right. I know yeah. you want, I know you want to work. I know you have these career goals. I know you have aspirations and technically, right. yes, any position is, is, is a step toward it in, 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 a, in an ideal world. But, you know, you, you can, you, you can afford to be particular with the opportunities you pursue. And, you know, we were fortunate enough that, 
you know, I, I was pretty established where she had the opportunity or she had the ability to kind of be choosy with, with what she wanted to do, but not everybody can do it. Uh-uh. Yeah. And I think, I think it's, it's really good that you can, especially as, as an entrepreneur, you don't want to just, just because somebody's willing to pay you um, right. or says, Hey, I, or, or, or expresses that need um, doesn't mean you should kind of like lower your standards or lower your price or change, right. you know, who you are, because that kind of, you know, kind of dilutes the whole humming, humming bee experience. So. Yeah. Is it, I mean, and like Craig and I went through that as well, especially, you know, during this past year, yeah. um, I was a little worried that I was going to have to return to corporate at one point before I did my rebrand and, you know, things factor in like, okay, well you need to be making this much and you know, all money isn't good money. I yeah. think that that's just always the phrase to go back to. Yeah. Um, so I definitely get that. And, you know, luckily he was in a position to support us on, you know, the tougher months during the pandemic. Um, but yeah, we've had those conversations too, for sure. Yeah. So what, I'm not gonna say it's the last question, but darn it, because I have a last question. Yeah, I'm <laughs> not. That's why like, so I say I lied. I'm not gonna say it's, it's the last question, but this might take because um, we've only got so much space on our, our camera memory card. But uh, I know you read the New York Times article that we we discussed a few episodes ago, where it covered the three yes. women um, in right. the pandemic, and I wanted you did read it, right? I did not read it, but I listened to you all's podcast. I'm sorry. You that's shared the enough. article and tagged your husband in it as if you read it. Because I think she, that I read, she read it through that. Of it and didn't finish it, David. Okay. Why are you so calling me out? I'm calling you out right. because you did, you did that thing that people on social media do where they share stuff that they haven't read. She trusted the source. We, the no. See, she trusted the source. We were the source. Well, what, we were incredible. Well, uh, two questions in, in my one hey, question. Is your question, David? A compound um, question. Compound question. So technically, I'm, I'm cheating. Let's try to send me a research packet to go over. Um, well, I thought that this was a safe question because you I made me believe that you had already read it. So what one was your reaction to the cliff note version of the article? And can you empathize with anything that one of the three women went through? So essentially kind of give us your um yeah. Your account of like, um, what the pandemic was like for you as 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 a mom, working mom. And so, like, not to um, put my husband on blast, obviously. Blast he's him a great, up. He's a great father. He's a good husband. Um, but I think that there are just, like, there's, I saw this, like, design of a man and a woman. And it's like, the man says all right, night, honey, I'm going to bed. And the woman has this bubble of all the things that are in her mind that she's thinking of that need to be completed before she can just be like, all right, good night, honey, I'm going to bed. And I think that that has shown true throughout the pandemic. And like, I broke down personally, um, not to get, you know, too deep. Uh, get deep. Sure. We are here to get deep. I share a lot of, I share tea of mine all the time. Mm-hmm. But, um, I mean, we've had conversations about each other's wounds, so. <laughs> exactly. Um, my, <laughs> the birth control that I was on was very triggering to my mental health. And I did not realize that until um, May of 2020. And by then we had been in the pandemic for a couple of months and I felt like I was breaking down. Like he was out of school. Um, It was just me and him every day. I was still trying to run my business and it was difficult. You know, it was hard. There were hard days. And also like where I would usually take a mommy day it's a pandemic outside. Where the hell are you going to go? You know what I mean? And so there was like no escape. It was literally me and Patrick 24 seven. And I was growing to resent my husband, Craig, because he could close himself in this office and be on calls all day or focus on his work. And I didn't have that same luxury. Mm -hmm. And you know, even though I'm doing 
I'm comfortable in business. It still isn't the type of money that he is bringing in, you know, that is more consistent and guaranteed. Sure. And so I wouldn't even say that like he was setting a precedent. I think that it was also my own inner guilt, like, Oh, let me keep Patrick away or let me keep him quiet or I'll work on my stuff when he goes to sleep. Like it was a lot of just my own doing at times where I'm like, the mom is the glue of the family. I've got to keep everything together, you know? And so I do think that like I could relate to those, but like I literally almost broke down during this pandemic and it wasn't until like I was, I was considering antidepressants because it was that hard. And, um, you know, after talking to my midwife, we discussed, or my therapist and my midwife, we discussed like, well, let's see what happens once you become off of birth control. And literally it was like night and day. So at least I didn't have the rock or the weight of the pandemic Plus what was I was fighting with mentally with whatever was going on with my hormones. Um, but yeah, it was tough as shit. <laughs> like I could definitely relate to it. And like, even as helpful as my husband is, even as involved as he is, it's just some things that mm-hmm. men don't get, you know, um, like, he was, well, no, I think the gym was closed, but like he gets a gym time. Usually what well, used to be an hour a day or an hour and a half a day, you know, and it's like, well, I got to wait till the kid goes to sleep and in bed until, you know, such and such, I can go ahead and do those things. And so I had to have a real conversation with him. Like, I need you to do more. And luckily, like, he's a good dude. So he is going to try to do more, but at the same time, like I think we as women expect men to have our bubble too. Mm-hmm. They, don't. they don't, you know? And I think that that's really hard to realize um, as a mom and wife, like we carry them for nine months. So we get ready for it for nine months. Whereas the dad sometimes is like, Oh, it's a baby. Like I remember, I remember being at a party and this, this dude, it was like a kid's party. And this dude comes up to him and he's like, Oh, wait till the baby gets here. You'll be all in then. And I was just like, wait, what now? <laughs> I was just like, what do you mean? He's like, Oh, it's not really real for us until the baby gets here. And I just was like, what kind of patriarchal bullshit is that? Like, what? Okay, his body ain't changing, but guess what? I'm gonna wake him up if I get up to go pee. Like, no, we need to get ready too. Yeah. And I think, but I, I just think that, like, and not to, you know, beat a dead horse, but like, we live in a very patriarchal society. Mm-hmm. Like, um, a lot of things are catered to men. And I think the way things are changing. And we're getting such pushback is because people don't want to let go of their freedoms and their privilege, you know, racially and gender wise. You know, I think that I definitely agree with the article after I read it, the full version. So you're it, agreeing with it beforehand? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, she's agreeing. I'm saying it. I read a good section because of it. It, 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 doesn't, it doesn't make a declaration. You, it's just an you agree agreeing. with it. It just. And see, here's another thing. I don't have time to read David. So, boom. Amen. I bet you my husband had time to read it. Yeah. David. With, uh, <laughs> after his hour to have Jim say. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, okay. I, know, I, know, I know you say another question. I don't think we have, think we have time. I think we do. No, because no. there's only so much time left it's on, a the, great on the memory ending card. Question. This is a finale question. My question for you earlier, you mentioned that you want to make an impact. So as a wife. As, especially as a mother, a mother of a young man, when he grows up and he is reflecting about his mother, what are things that you want him to remember and look back and say that made up his mother, that made you the wonderful woman that you are for him? Um, 
I think that like I truly care about others. And I think that even though I didn't take no shit, I was fun. I was a fun mom. And like, I truly cared about making memories with him. And I want him to like, look at me, how I looked at my mother. Like I want our relationship to make him excited about being a dad or seeing him and or seeing my husband and I together, like being excited about being a husband and being a father. I think that would be, you know, the true gift once he grows up as a little feminist, you know, and makes, you know, using whatever privilege he may have to help his fellow others. It always goes back to him. Like I know you said it about me, but like if, if he is a good man and he cares about others and not just cares about his, also his impact, I think that I would have done like a good job. Well said. Very well said. Told you we could do it. Um, so yeah, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll begin the, uh, process of closing here, but, um, where can, uh, people find you and connect with you on, on social media? Yes. Um, so if you want to follow me, uh, I am Missy Wilson. So it's at Missy Ray on Instagram, but please follow my business humming bee and it is humming bee buzz on Instagram and Facebook. Okay. And, um, or www.hummingbeedesigns.com. And that, uh, they'll also be able to see if they go to your website, um, that you were featured in the local magazine, right? I was, yes. The Houston cool. Voyage. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Very, uh, very, very cool, um, appreciate website it. and redesign. Very exciting. Mm-hmm. Um, any, all right. So one last question. <laughs> Any advice? You for, just her. I know you just I did. Her. I did. But since she went, I'm gonna go ahead and go to um, any advice for aspiring designers. Yes. Um, In 90 seconds. Oh man. Okay. Believe in mentorship. Reach out to your local design community. Get on Facebook. Get on social media. Find designers that inspire you. Um, mentorship has been a huge thing in my life. And if there are any young designers that are out there listening, I would be happy to meet you and kind of help you along the way. Cool. So mm-hmm. I'll, um, I'll put all of Missy's, uh, contact information or her social media profiles and <clears throat> her website, excuse me, in the, uh, the description, if you're on, and if you're on, if you're watching us on YouTube and then also on the show notes, if you're listening, um, to the podcast, uh, just want to say thanks to all of our subscribers, anyone who's uh, been in the comments. We really appreciated uh, a lot of the banter that's been going on back and forth, especially under the uh, the Malcolm and Marie movie review. There was uh, there was a lot of conversation going on. So really appreciate that. We're on our way to 100 likes on Facebook. So if you uh, come across us here on YouTube or if you're listening to us and you haven't liked us on Facebook, go ahead and do that and be sure to share us with all of your, your friends and family. We like to have fun. We like to think of this uh, podcast experience as sort of family oriented. We're shooting this in our house, family pictures behind my shoulder. So uh, very much would like to welcome everyone into the Vibe Tribe, as my wife has uh, has, has coined everything. So uh, be sure to leave some reviews on on uh, on your podcast platform of choice as well so that we can show up uh, when someone else is searching for um, podcasts similar similar to ours. So this was our second guest of um, Mompreneur March. So we have two more guests lined up. So really excited about that. Um, Did I miss anything? I think that's everything. Is that everything? All right. So we're going to get out of here. It's been fun. Thanks, Missy, for coming on. We appreciate you. We uh, we value your your work and, and the impact that you're having in the design community. We appreciate you. So we're going to get out of here. It's still a pandemic, even though the vaccines are out. If you've gotten yours, awesome. But if not, social distance, wear a mask, wash your hands, be safe. We'll catch you guys next week. Peace. Stop me now. Yeah, I done can't wait to fucking stop me now. Now, now they bring me this thought and let me down